Hello, everyone, and welcome. This is uh, Career Map TV's webinar with Oxford Biomedica. I am Andy Johnson. I am the content lead for Career Map. And I hope, hopefully, everyone is in the chat. I believe everyone is here. I believe we can just uh, get on into it. But first, I'd like to say, um, Oxford Biomedica, this is expertise in pioneering healthcare, cell and gene therapy. So, if our experts would like to introduce themselves. Hello, everyone. Hi Hello. everyone. So I'm James Miskin. I'm the Chief Technical Officer of Oxford Biomedica, and I'm going to be talking you through a little bit. And I'll hand over to my colleagues uh, Kasim and Kath. So I'm Kath um, from University of Oxford, and I'll be telling you a bit about Oxford later on. I note that Kasim is a black box currently. I'll wait for. Kasim. Um, Hi, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Kasim Rafiq. Uh, I'm an associate professor at UCL. I'm one of the co directors of ABVIP. My connection's not great, but hopefully you can hear me. Yes, we can, we hear can you. see you, you now. As well. Okay, In so I guess one. we're probably. I'll share my screen. Can everyone see that? Yep. Great. Oh, sorry. Sorry. No worries. Thanks, Needham. Um, that's it. Good. Sorry. <laughs> Great. So welcome, everyone, um, to this uh, live webinar. Um, so we're going to give you a bit of background to ABVIP, which is our collaborative training partnership, which is related specifically to advancing the bioscience of viral products. Um, next slide, please. So quick overview of the content. Um, gonna give a very, very rapid um, quick fire summary of ABVIP and the CTP itself. A Little bit about the planned cohort training and experiences that one that the, the students on this program will receive. I'm then gonna hand over to Kasim at UCL who's gonna give a bit of background to the experience at UCL. Then. Um, Kasim will hand over to Kath, who's going to talk through um, the experience at University of Oxford. We then have a, a series of project video um, presentations. Um, so these are auto, these are pre-recorded for the for the eight projects that we're going to be talking about today. I will say now, and I'll say it again at the end. Um, we have already selected eight projects for funding. There is actually a ninth project we plan to fund. And we're in the process of selecting that project as well. So watch this space for that ninth project. And then after those video presentations, we'll just quickly run through the application requirements of the process for that application. And then we'll move into Q&A. So without further ado, next slide. <coughs> Thanks, Nina. So ABVIP is one of 10 um, collaborative training partnerships that have been funded by the BBSRC. So that's the Biolog Biological um, Sciences Research Council in the UK. Um, so this was a, a pot of money that totaled 22 and a half million pounds um, from UKRI. Um, the CTPs are, are their doctoral training programs, but they're, they're called collaborative training programs specifically because they're led by industry, but partnered with academia. So the selected students who um, who end up running through these projects will gain their PhD DPhils from either UCL or, or from the University of Oxford, but the work will be done in direct collaboration with um, a, a, a supervisor, both in the academic organization and one in the, um, in the company in Oxford Biomedica. So all of the different BBSRCs um, funded CTPs were um, in a wide range of fields, actually. Um, this is, I think the only one in this specific sector, um, and typically the CTPs range between 15 to 35 students across the entire um, seven-year program. Um, our, our project 
or our, our CTP is of, for 24 students in total. Um, and this seminar today is really about, or webinar today is really talking about the projects that are for the year entry of 2023. So it'll be starting around the September, October time um, in 2023. And we will have hopefully nine projects at that stage. Next slide, please. So the CTP is really primarily there to address the fundamental and applied bioscience challenges associated with viral vectors for, for gene therapies and for vaccines. So we, it, as I said, is a seven year program with 24 students shit um, over that three years of intake. Um, but each of those projects is a four year project. Uh, they're fully funded projects. Um, what that means is the, the stipend for the students will be paid um, by the BBSLC and then the um, fun fees are contributed to um, um, for the for the for the lab fees by the BBSRC and and additionally supplemented by by the company and the and the academic partners. So that gives us a total of uh, twenty four studentships. Um, the plan here is to create a research hub and to really increase the breadth and capacity of research in this specific sector around viral products. Next slide, please. So the Abbott Managing Management Board at the moment is led by myself as the as the director of the CTP, together with my colleagues Kiri Metrofanis, who is actually on the call today, and he'll be available for the Q and A session. So Kiri is our chief scientific officer. Another colleague at Oxford Biomedica is Dr. Carol Knavelman. So she is the head of process research and development at Oxford Biomedica and co-director for the industry and commercialization. Then from UCL we have Professor Gary Lai, who's head of department at biochemical engineering. Kath Green, who is on the call today from the University of Oxford. Uh, Kasim Rafiq, who's from UCL. Um, and then we also have um, colleagues, uh, Robert Gilbert from University of Oxford, Deborah Gill from the University of Oxford and Stephanie Frank from UCL. So in total, we have nine members of our management board. Next slide, please. So this is a really high level overview um, of the research areas that we're attempting to address by this collaborative training partnership and specifically they're in the field of virus um, products virus based products so as a company oxford biomedica has been developing gene therapy um, technologies uh, since we since we were founded over 25 years ago and so have our collaborators at both the university of oxford and at ucl been working on viral products so this gives us an opportunity to really leverage the expertise in all three organizations we already collaborate closely with both um both academic partners on this project and so this is really expanding and broadening on our, on, on an established partnership we'll be looking at viral vector design and engineering we'll be looking at data science tools We'll be looking at analytical characterization and quality control aspects of the products and also looking at ways of accelerating uh, both bioprocess scale um, development and scale up. So collectively, the scientific projects that we're funding here are really to gain increased understanding um, and to ask a research question specifically around this topic. But as you can see, it's, it's pretty broad. The idea overall is to result in improved products for future gene therapies and vaccines. Next slide, please. So quick overview on the cohort and experience. So the specific um, challenge for uh, this CTP is to make sure that the, the students who run through the program will have a significant cohort experience. So we've already got students on program. We've recently had the 2022 year entry uh, project start. So we have seven students on program at the current time. Um, so these additional nine studentships will, will add to that, bringing to a total of 16 after the you know the beginning of year two and then that will be brought up to a total of 24 at the beginning of year three and there's a lot of experience around specifically the cohort experience and making sure that you will have a a network of of individuals who are going through a very similar experience to you you can leverage each other leverage each other's um, experiences and we can also leverage um, things like training programs within the universities and within the companies um, a big part of it will be related to outreach. Um, a significant part of it here is really to generate people with with doctoral um, uh, doctoral students who are very highly employable in in the fast growing sector that we we work in today. And obviously, under underpinning all of that is the knowledge that you'll gain through the four years of study. Next slide, please. So we intend to make sure that this is a student centered program. 
above and beyond a typical PhD training program. So because of pi primarily because of the, the cohort experience and also the fact that we've got some structured training programs specifically aimed at providing you with the skills and transferable skills and knowledge that will result in a very, very transferable set of skills. Uh, we intend to recruit from a very wide pool of potentially eligible students uh, with, a, with a view to equality and diversity and inclusivity. Um, we will specifically be targeting gaining experience at the interface between academia and industry. And I think all three partners on this program realize the value of people who have worked in that, in, at, at that, at that network junction. You'll have your own ready-made network through your cohort experience and through the academics that you'll get to know and uh, through the industrialists that you'll get to know through this program. You will have targeted interactions with ex existing other doctoral training programs, um, both at Oxford and at UCL. And the intent here is to attract the highest caliber students um, to really push forward the boundaries of this really valuable area of scientific research. Next slide, please. So, we will have a significant amount of interaction between industry and academia. As part of the four-year um, project, you will have a minimum of three months actually in total at Oxford Biomedica. That could be significantly longer for certain projects. Um, placements will be undertaken in relation to the research project and should be developed in collaboration with the supervisors. Um, the training for the students will include uh, a substantial amount of academic training modules covering a wide range of topics that are specific to this, um, this uh, CTP, but also others that are already established in both academic partners. So it'll give you a broad amount of training, including exposure to a lot of different things, such as business strategy, intellectual property, project management, and such, uh, such topics. Uh, next slide, please. So I'm now going to hand over to Kasim, who's going to give a bit of an overview of uh, the UCL. Fantastic. Thanks a lot, James. Can you hear me? Yes. Perfect. Uh, Neelam, can we go to the next slide, please? Thank you very much. Um, so just to quickly introduce UCL. Uh, so we're delighted to be one of the partners on this BBSRC CTP with Oxford Biomedica and University of Oxford. Um, and UCL is one of the uh, founding institutions in London. Um, it was established in 1826, and it's been well known that UCL is one of the universities that has been inclusive in terms of both uh, one of the first universities to accept uh, females, as well as one of the first universities to admit applicants or candidates, regardless of their race, uh, religion, creed, or uh, ethnicity. So if we can go to the next slide, please. So UCL now is one of the top 10 academic institutions in the world. And for work around biomedical research and bioengineering, it's rated as first in the UK um, for uh, research strength. That was based on the uh, 2014 Research Excellence Framework. Within the Faculty of Engineering, within which biochemical engineering sits, uh, it's the second largest recipient of UK uh, research funding within this space. And I'm a member of the Department of Biochemical Engineering where we focus extensively on the translation and development and bioprocessing of therapeutics, including advanced cell and gene therapy and viral vector products. Now, not all projects will be connected to the Department of Biochemical Engineering, but there is a focus on how we can understand the fundamental bioscience and translate that as part of some of the projects that will be offered. Next slide, please. So just to very quickly introduce the Department of Biochemical Engineering, we have 24 academic members of staff, uh, a number of undergraduate uh, research, uh, sorry, non undergraduate students, but more importantly, over 90 doctoral researchers. And I stress that because that provides an excellent environment for our CTP students to be able to engage, discuss and learn from other doctoral researchers. That's also supported by core research technicians and postdoctoral researchers who provide additional skill and expertise to support our students. And finally, uh, as part of the CTP, clearly it's an industry-led collaborative training partnership, and we work extensively with a number of industrial and clinical collaborators. The department itself has resulted in nine spin-out companies across the therapeutic and technology development space, and we have large other activities engaged with a number of other industrial partners. And with that, I'll hand over to Kath. Thanks, Sixeem. Uh, next slide, please, Neelam. So 
Um, along with UCL, Oxford has been at the forefront of viral vector research over the last 20 years or so, focusing particularly on gene therapies, um, but also, of course, on vaccines, which hit the news quite significantly in 2020, of course. So the Avib C TP um, will be run at Oxford from the Medical Sciences Division, which is a conglomeration of 16 departments and 72 research intensive units, um, where there are currently more than 1500 graduate students across the medical, medical Sciences Division. So we are a large research active um, university. Next slide, please, Nina. So we partner with external funding schemes um, across the breadth of medical science research and the AVID program we are very pleased to have in our, in our portfolio of, of doctoral training um, programs that we run through the university, welcoming students from all over the world. Next slide, please. One of the unique things about studying at Oxford is as well as becoming part of a scientific department, you will also be become part of a college and that means that you get to participate in some of the medieval activities that um, operate in our beautiful city as well as some of the cutting edge ones it's a really good fun place to come and study next slide please and in a similar way to UCL, as well as the training that you will get as part of the AVIB cohort, there are lots of bespoke training courses offered to um, medical science division students in our graduate programs. Um, they cover everything from advanced microscopy to public engagement strategies, teaching resources and entrepreneurship strategies. Next and last slide, please, Nina. And so, Oxford is a really vibrant academic community where we look to build students for the future with transferable skills and entrepreneurship. This CTP really um, it will become a key training partner with University College London and with um, Oxford Biomedica. We really hope that some of you on this call today will be looking to apply and join us. If you put the next one up, please, Neelam. So the next thing that we're going to do, if you just go straight to the next one, is present the eight videos of the PhD topics that we are advertising for this year's um, application round. So this is for intake starting in 2023. As James said at the beginning, there is one further project that will still to be released. So watch this space. Um, so Neelam, if you just start the videos, they cover everything across the biology of vectors of cells and of organs. And I think they're really exciting research projects. I hope that you guys agree. Off you go, Neelam. Hello, I'm Sandy Douglas, and I'd like to give you a very brief intro to this project. Properties of Adenovirus Factors Mediating Mucosal Immunogenicity. What we're trying to do is to make better mucosal vaccines, uh, such as those de delivered by nasal sprays, inhalation or tablets. And that seems like a great idea. It avoids the use of needles, so that sort of vaccine would be easy and painless to administer. You can imagine in a future pandemic we might be able to simply mail people's vaccines out to them. More importantly, though, if we can get them right, they might actually be even more effective than injected vaccines by inducing mucosally targeted immune responses. Now, adenovirus vectors are good vaccines if you inject them, but that's not what adenoviruses evolved to do. They evolved to infect mucosa, so they should, in principle, make really good mucosal vaccines. But we don't know how to pick the best adenos from among the very many that there are out there uh, for this purpose. So this project is going to try and address that big and important knowledge gap. We're going to start off with a library containing millions of adenoviruses developed by the project's co-supervisor Kerry Fisher and Theolytics, which is a company Kerry co-founded. What we want to do is to find the best adenovirus from that library, which is a bit like picking a needle out of a haystack. And you, as the student, will develop screens and selections to find that needle. For example, we'll expose respiratory and gut mucosa to the viruses, wash away all the virus which fails to get into the cells, and then apply high throughput sequencing to identify which adenoviruses have managed to get in. We'll take the most promising individual adenos, turn them into vaccines, and test their immunogenicity in mice. And in parallel, we'll use bioinformatic analyses to try to identify the features shared between the promising adenoviruses, which should let us make even better candidates in the future. This should be fun, it should answer an important question, and it should give you as the student exposure to a range of techniques and a diverse set of learning environments. 
Hello there, my name is Kerry Fisher from the Department of Oncology and my co-supervisor is Robert Carlyle from the Department of Engineering. Now this project is about making new packaging cell lines for the production of stealthy envelope viruses and exosomes. So things like exosomes and uh, lentiviruses and CAR T cells have the potential to treat a wide range of indications. They're best used if given intravenously into the bloodstream, where they could circulate around the body um, to specific targets of interest, which might be organs and tissues, or in this case, it could be a tumour. The main problem with these types of agents is that they don't actually last long in the bloodstream and they're often neutralised or cleared very quickly. A couple of the things that cause this clearance can be complement a scavenging by macrophages or recognition of um, surface receptors by natural killer cells. What you tend to get is stress ligands that regulate it on the surface of these, um, of, of these agents that attract or precipitate the rapid clearance by one of these three mechanisms. And that's really a big issue preventing the successful deployment of these agents in the clinic. The problem with stress ligands can be exacerbated by production in a bioreactor, where stressful conditions might cause the upregulation of these ligands on the surface of the membranes. And you know, things like plasmids or, or viruses to transduce the packaging cell lines to genetically modify them may also have an additional effect. So what we're going to do in this project is use CRISPR and other technologies to interfere with or knock out these pathways. So that will result in membranes and therefore products that do not have any undesirable ligands. So the surface of these new products will now be have stealth-like qualities because there'll be nothing on them that can be inactivated by components of the bloodstream. So this project should result in new packaging cell lines, some good publications and very possibly some patent applications. The project would suit an innovative student who's really motivated to explore and test new ideas. So if this, if, if this is sort of the project you're interested in, please give us a call and drop us a line. We'll be happy to talk about it in more detail. Hi, I'm CJ Kai, the principal investigator of the Professor David Kurz Group at the Oxford University. I will supervise this project with, the, with Professor Stephen Hyde at the same department. Why to study this project by an integrative analysis of transcriptomics, proteomics, and metabolomics? Well, this is because the human liver is the largest organ of our body. It acquires so many diseases caused by infection and or non-infection factors. And many of um, liver genetic diseases are thought to be single gene disorders. The use of a lentiviral vector for studying this project is because the virus is capable of transducing dividing and non-dividing cells, importantly integrating into host genome to achieve long-term transgene expression. However, liver cells are generally quiescent hence less permissive to the viral vector transduction. This suggests to us that there are the biological limitations and rate limiting steps to the efficient lentiviral vector liver transduction. To de determine these limitation factors, this project will use omics technologies, which are the emerging concept of molecular medicine in order to profile the cellular gene protein expression and the metabolism that are altered by lentiviral tra gene transfer. Omics technologies refer to the collective high throughput analysis of, in our case, transcriptomics, proteomics, and metabolomics. The analysis of this large data set will require integrated bioinformatics and computational tools to identify the cellular targets. These cellular targets, in our case, liver transduction, will be further evaluated 
in cell cultures and animal model. So by the completion of this project, we will develop a new strategy to improve lentiviral vector liver transduction efficiency. Hello, everybody. This project is focused on the use of normothermic perfused organs to profile the pharmacokinetics and infection efficiency of novel viral gene therapy vectors. The project relies on unique access to a device which can keep human organs alive and thriving outside the body for many hours. Such a device has several useful applications, but in this project, it will be used to identify viral vectors which can best infect the liver, i.e. the target for many liver-directed gene therapy approaches. Under carefully controlled physiologic conditions, livers can be dosed with therapeutic and the pharmacokinetics of the agent can then be determined. In preliminary studies, the PK profile, virus deposition, and transgene expression from the virus have been characterized. In this project, in collaboration with Oxford Biomedica, the student will develop and test new gene therapy vectors, profiling clearance and infection. This will spare many hundreds of experiments performed in mice and will shorten the runway to clinical translation of these vectors. This will ultimately enhance patient benefit. Thank you. Hello, I'm Daniel O'Connor, and along with my colleagues Professor Ronaldi and Professor Lam, we have an exciting doctoral project titled Utilizing a Systems Approach to Advance Our Understanding of Immune Responses to Viral Vectors. Viral vectors have been successfully both as vaccines and as gene therapies. Recently, viral vectors had a profound impact on the course of the COVID-19 pandemic, with an estimated 6.5 million lives saved in 2021 alone. Moreover, viral vector-based gene therapies have had a profound impact on patients with inherited diseases such as spinal muscular atrophy, enabling babies to meet important motor milestones that would not have been possible without treatment such as the ability to stand and walk independently. By a systems approach, we mean the use of contemporary technologies to get a high resolution view of a complex system, in this case, the immune response to viral vectors. Our new system has evolved to recognize and eliminate viruses. However, pre-existing antivector immunity is problematic for both gene therapy and vaccine applications, reducing efficacy and potentially raising safety concerns. And many immune receptors recognize concerned viral motifs present in viral vectors and initiate inflammatory responses as well as drive adaptive immunity. Depending on the purpose of the therapy, the desired immune response may be highly disparate. In fact, we may want this to be immunostimulatory for vaccine, but conversely, we may wish for immunization in the case of therapy. To optimize the use of viral vectors, a better understanding of their interaction with the immune system is needed. Recent technological advances offer opportunity to rebuild the immunology underlying responses to viral vectors at unprecedented resolution, which we hope that they must maximize efficacy and safety of these products. I leave you with the aims of this project. Hi, I'm Andrea Riot. Thank you for your interest in this collaborative project with UCL and Oxford Biomedica. One of the most efficient gene transfer methodologies to deliver therapeutic DNA into patients is the use of engineered viruses, such as lentiviral vectors or LVs. To produce safe, non-replicating lentiviral vectors, you need to deliver multiple components from separate DNA in LV-producing cells, including GABPO for viral core and envelopes. The other essential component is the vector genome itself, which encodes therapeutic genes to be delivered to target cells. The delivery of these components in LV producing cells determine the cell line. Transient systems over fast development timelines, however, a major drawback 
is the expensive cost at larger scale. Innovation in cell line development has led to packaging cell lines and producer cell lines. Producer cell lines have all the components of the vector and the genome stably integrated into the host cell. Producer cells are desirable as they represent the more scalable and robust manufacturing process. Construction of these cell lines, however, at high level is quite complicated, in part by the toxicity to the cell of some of the viral components, while the expression of other components are highly regulated or induce metabolic burden on the cell. This project focuses on the level of vector genome RNA. However, it's been found to be challenging to stably express high enough level of RNA of RNA genome with potential for mixed results. Therefore, this project will explore methodologies and evaluate LV production that boost genome RNA level using the strategies developed so far by Oxford Biomedica and UCL. The student will also investigate vector analytics and scale down manufacture to demonstrate the quality and scalability of cells engineered in this project. At the end of the project, we envision the following impact. For the student, you get valuable experience in research and pro project delivery. You will be working in an industrial setting and gain an awareness of what can facilitate a robust process to deliver lentiviral vectored products to patients. You will be supported by the following supervisors who are already working collaboratively and have complementary expertise in the topics needed in the project. Thank you for watching and we look forward to receiving your applications. Hello, my name is Professor Dan Bracewell uh, and I'm just going to say a few short words about this exciting new PhD project. Uh, I'll be starting with um, Sarah Rouse from Imperial College um, in Autumn 2023. So uh, Sarah and I have been looking um, at this area of trying to understand the heterogeneity that exists uh, within viral preparations um, for a couple of years now uh, and we're now in a position to, um, to move forward. Um, so the primary technique um, that Sarah's group is, is specialised in is these cryo-electron microscopy to understand various structures, but in this case, viral structures. So at UCL, we've been preparing um, samples uh, of adenovirus initially, um, and we've been analyzing those um, with the equipment at Imperial College. And we can see this just briefly here, gathering images, classifying those images. The exciting uh, new steps forward we're planning to take in this project is to use those images to isolate certain areas of the virus. We have interest in the spike, we have interest in the portal whereby it's the area of the virus where the genetic material is packaged. And in this process here, uh, these series of steps, we can see how we can mask certain areas so we can focus our analysis on on these key areas that are related to viral biology. So uh, we have planned the project to, to start looking at the virus and then move on to other viral vectors using this technique, We're collaborating and creating samples at UCL and, and, and other collaborators. We'll be putting them into this process to gain a deeper understanding of heterogeneity, um, which will then feed back into the better design of these processes. So thanks for your attention. Um, and I look forward to receiving lots of exciting applications. Thank you. Welcome to this short video introducing the 2023 PhD studentship in repurposing an endogenous human mRNA transfer system as a gene therapy tool. The primary supervisor for this project is myself, Darren Nesbeth, an associate professor of bioprocess biology at the UCL Department of Biochemical Engineering.
in addition to broader bioprocessing for biocatalysis and antibody-based therapeutics, I have a research track record in virus engineering going back to 2001 and spanning lentivirus, AAV, and vaccinia virus. In the field of gene therapy, the immunogenicity of AAV at high dosage is becoming a challenge. So this project seeks to repurpose a naturally occurring human protein system as a gene transfer tool, in principle to reduce potential immunogenicity. This naturally occurring human protein system works as follows. A human gene, X, is transcribed to messenger RNA. This messenger RNA is translated to protein X. Protein X then forms a capsid-like structure that harbors in its interior only copies of the X mRNA. This capsid typically buds into a multivesicular body abbreviated as MVB in this diagram. The MVB fuses with the cell membrane to release X particles to the cell exterior. These particles fuse with human cells they encounter to ultimately deliver their X mRNA payload to the cytosol of those target cells. In this project, we will investigate the capacity for the X mRNA to be modified to incorporate additional genetic information, initially reporter proteins, and ultimately information relevant to gene therapy, whilst retaining or enhancing its gene transfer performance. Great. Um, so, as I said, those were pre-recorded videos uh, going through the, the eight different projects. Hopefully people can hear me okay. Uh, so we're back live now. So next slide, please, Neelam. So just a little bit of an overview on the application requirements and associated information. So as I said earlier, we're aiming to have nine students. Um, four of the projects will be um, registered at UCL and five of the projects will be registered at the University of Oxford. And these will be starting in September, October 2023. Um, so a little under a year from now. There are some requirements um, for you to be considered as, a, as an appropriate applicant for this uh, uh, collaborative training partnership or the projects on this. Um, that is a minimum of an upper second class UK bachelor's degree or a, in a re relevant discipline or an overseas equivalent. Um, for home status, uh, people will have to be UK national or have settled status or pre-settled state status or indefinite leave to remain. Um, just as we said earlier, there is only one overseas student um, eligible in each academic institution per cohort entry. So in principle, that that's um, up to two students can be from overseas. Um, and just so you know, this is a UK government, um, UKRI stipulated uh, restriction um, insofar as the use of uh, BBSRC funds. In order to apply, you'll have to provide a, a curriculum vitae, a personal statement, and two letters of recommendation. And in your application, it's or coincident with the application, please inform the referees that you've you've provided, as they will be sent an automatic request to complete these uh, referent referee processes. We ask that you apply to a maximum of three research projects across the programme. So as I say, there will be a total of nine um, research projects. Please only apply for up to three. Um, but the combination of uh, three that you apply for can be either all from one organisation or can be across both academic partners. And please list the projects that you have applied for in your covering letter um, to, to ensure that we maintain um, oversight on that. Next slide, please. So furthermore, the PhD or DPhil will be awarded by the academic institution in which the project will be undertaken. So if you're performing your project at University of Oxford and Oxford Biomedica, your degree will be a um, 
DPhil from the University of Oxford. If you're registered at UCL, you will receive a PhD, if successful, of course, um, at the end of the project um, from UCL. So critical, critical information, the deadline for applications will be Friday the 9th of December at 12 noon. And you can apply through um, both the University of Oxford and UCL uh, Advit websites. Um, and there should be links available on the Oxford Biomedica Careers page as well. Next slide, please. So at this point, I'll ask the rest of the, the presenters um, who are on the call to, to come on video and, and unmute. And we'll try our best to address the questions that have popped up in the, in the Q&A and in the chat. Um, so I've been paying a little bit of attention at these and I'll, I'll try and filter through them in, in order, if that's okay. So the first one is, uh, I guess there's a question from Chica. When is the application for the studentship ending? So I've just said that, that's on the 9th of uh, December this year. Next question relates to the number of uh, projects. So, so just to reiterate, these are, um, we're looking here for applications for the nine projects that will be funded in the 2023 year entry. There'll be further projects in the 2024 year entry and we already have students on programme. Um, John, there's a question from John, uh, what makes an application stand out? I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna pass that maybe to Kasim and Kath to comment. Sure, I, I think from UCL's perspective, um, I think we're looking for students who um, obviously understand the kind of core focus and the scientific aspects of the project, but really demonstrate, I think, a willingness to learn and being proactive um, and demonstrating that if they don't necessarily have the, the, the necessary lab skill sets just yet, that they you know, clearly would like to develop that as part of their project. I think from my perspective, what generally makes a good PhD student isn't necessarily having the, uh, the intellectual um, or academic understanding, because that will come during the course of the project, but more so the ability to overcome challenges and problems, because I think all of us around the room or around the, this virtual room recognize that um, doing a PhD you know, in, you encounter a number of challenges and it's more about how you can overcome them, persevere and push forward. Yeah, absolutely. Kath? Yeah, that's right. So we're looking for students with great attitude, a drive to come and do some of this really cutting edge science that we're doing. We want you to be enthused about the science that we're doing and come and bring some of your enthusiasm, your fresh eyes and your young verve to our established research teams. Um, attitude is everything when it comes to doing a PhD. So, and don't forget that you are, it's fine for you to contact the supervisors directly. If there's a project that really excites you, get in touch with the supervisor. They can give you more details than the details that you just got in those little two minute presentations. We love to talk about our science, so do reach out well if you need to know things. Brilliant, thanks Kasim, thanks Kath. So the next question is around the project. So I think we've given a bit of an overview on that already. Um, next question is about how is the industry changing? So that's a great question. Um, cell and gene therapy and um, viral um, therapies that are used as vaccines is a, is a fast growing um, area of science. Um, Oxford Biomedica has been working in this, this area for over 25 years. Gene therapy, therapy as a concept was sort of thought about, you know, way over 30 years ago. And um, if if you paid attention, you can you can see that now there are some really life changing medicines coming to coming to the market. And what that means is products that have been through the various stages of preclinical, well, through technical development, preclinical development, clinical development, and ultimately commercial approval have happened and are transforming lives. So there's a huge amount of interest in the um, both the academic and the industrial sectors to improve the technologies and to open up um, the possibility of treating a wider range of, of, of human disease. So it's changing in lots of ways, both technically, um, you know, new tools are coming to the to the fore that maybe weren't around um, several years ago but also understanding how to successfully develop and, and um, you know, both the technologies and the, and the products based on them is improving all the time. So it's a very exciting, very fast moving um, area of research. I'm now gonna say something very biased. I think it's one of the most exciting areas of, of uh, medical development from a technical uh, perspective. And may, maybe Kiri, I don't know whether you want to, to add something to that. 
Yeah, so the, the, the challenges that we're trying to address here is the trying to develop uh, not treatments for disease, but cures. So the exciting aspect of working in cell and gene therapy is to transition from uh, having to administer small molecules, especially in indications where there isn't anything at the moment, to trying to cure uh, patients and you know, do it once and be done. Uh, this represents some challenges with regard to reimbursement and, and how do you, how does the various uh, funding agencies uh, 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 cope with that? But as we have seen a number of these products reach commercial um, uh, okay. Valid validation, um, we have seen the development of processes that allow this to happen. So patients can be screened and payments made if the, um, the, the patients are benefiting. So how do you try and treat all the various diseases by um, as a cure where uh, in some instances where it's a, it's a rare disease, it's one gene, you're putting that back. Uh, that that it represents a challenge in terms of delivery, but in other more complicated indications, um, the uh, you, you you may need to deliver multiple genes, multiple control mechanisms, um, and the underlying technology for getting these different elements, the genes, the the sequences into patient cells, um, in an efficient way with minimal disruption. That's that's. Uh, that's key to, to a lot of this. So, um, as, as James said, this is the most exciting area in uh, medical <laughs> medical therapy because we are looking for cures. Absolutely. Thanks, Kiri. Uh, so the next question is about whether we partner with other companies. So as a, as a business, Oxford Biomedica is a, a an innovat innovation led um, contract development manufacturing organisation. Um, you may not know what that means, but essentially it means that we work very, very closely with partner companies. So for instance, a um, good example is our partnership with Novartis. Um, so we, um, the technology that went into the world's first approved um, chimeric antigen receptor T-cell uh, T therapy, um, which was developed by Novartis called Kimraya, the technology that went into that product is Oxford Biomedica's technology, and we are the global supplier for the product um, in terms of the vector that's used to modify the patient's own T cells. That product is a revolutionary therapy, basically targets a type of cancer that is caused by B cells um, being dysregulated. And essentially in a, in a significant number of patients who are, they've ex exhausted all, all other therapeutic options, these patients um, can and many have been cured. Um, they're starting to use the cure word here uh, for, you know, patients that otherwise would have had no treatment options. So that's one example. We have partnerships as a business with numerous other announced partners and quite a few that haven't been announced. So I can give you some examples of some announced partners. Uh, Bristol Myers Squibb, it's one of the biggest oncology companies in the world. Um, we have a collaboration with Berra Inge Ingelheim, which is one, of, which is a company um, that's partnered with the UK Cystic Fibrosis Consortium including links to both Oxford University and Imperial and, and Edinburgh in relation to the development of, an, of a lenti to treat cystic fibrosis, which is one of the more common rare diseases if that's not an oxymoron. So it's a very, very challenging and exciting area. Um, we've got numerous other projects, but I won't, I won't bore you with the details on that. Um, so the next question I think is related to Lentivector. Um, so very briefly, uh, Lentivector is a is a trade name that we use um, to describe our platform technology um, that's based on the use of a lentiviral vector. So this is a, um, a, a when we call a, vi a lentiviral vector because it's not a virus anymore. We've taken the features of um, the lentivirus, uh, the archetype lentivirus being um, HIV-1. We've taken the, the cool features and the, and the necessary features of that virus to allow us to generate a non-replication competent, safe viral vector-based delivery system. Um, I w there's a lot of complexity to this and we could talk for hours about it, so I won't. But in essence, we've, we've generated a, a very, very safe, very, very efficient way of transferring a nucleic acid genetic information, which can be pretty much anything within certain size constraints to target cells or target tissues, either to cells outside of the body in an ex vivo setting or actually through direct administration. 
So the, the cystic fibrosis example I talked about earlier is intended for direct administration into patients. So Lentivector is the trade name that covers off our entire platform. Quickly on the platform, that includes the actual components, the vector itself, and the science that goes into that, but also all of the manufacturing processes, the analytics, and the sort of intellectual property, both associated with patents and with, with trade secrets and know-how around that platform technology. So hopefully that covers your question, Olivia. Um, so the next question is about whether you can speak to students um, on this on this call. Well, on this call, we haven't got any of our existing students. Um, we did ask them if they wanted to, but we did accept the fact that they literally only started about three or four weeks ago. So we figured it was probably a little bit too soon for them to be uh, put into the uh, into the situation where they're where they're asked a bunch of bunch of questions are based on a relatively limited amount of experience. But in principle, I think that that could be arranged um, if you've got specific questions. Um, so again, like we said earlier, please don't hesitate to contact the um, the supervisors for each of the projects. Um, and contact through the ABVIP um, mailbox that we can, and, and if you've got specific questions or topics you want to talk about, um, we can we can try and make that happen. And it, it might be worth mentioning what the students have done already. So although they've only started a few weeks ago, they've actually done quite a lot, which I think is very exciting for them, but also it's a great start for their project. So the students have already been to Oxford Biomedica. So they've visited the company facility, they've had their tour, They've uh, met, obviously, with their industrial supervisor whilst there and, and, and obviously discussed the project and, and so on. But um, they the all um, all students are the ones that based at Oxford University, as well as UCL, have already had some training, not only at their respective institutes for their induction, but also some CTP specific training. So they've had some training around uh, design of experiments, uh, as well as an introduction to bioprocessing. And I believe in two weeks they'll be joining CAT. And, uh, and joining University of Oxford. And that will be, again, be all students, not just the Oxford students, but UCL students as well uh, for a viral vector course. Yeah, thank you, Kasim. One quick thing I'd like to say is um, we probably at the start should have introduced Neelam. So Neelam is in <laughs> on your screen. So Neelam uh, is, is an employee of Oxford Biomedica, but she's the Collaborative Training Partnership Program lead. So Neelam is, is basically coordinating all of us so we can we can essentially administer the, the the program as efficiently as possible so Neelam is sort of um, really focused on this project and is the person who will be sort of triaging any questions that come in through the mailbox system and actually making sure and Neelam has spent a lot of time getting to know the students um, dealing with any quick queries or whatever that may have been um, happening through the initiation of this this program so Neelam do you want to say a couple of words yeah sure can you hear me yep Okay. Yeah. Hi, everyone. Yes. So I'm the CTP program manager and I've been working with the students to help them settle in, um, answer any of their queries um, and help them kind of find their feet starting a PhD or default because that is, uh, you know, a, an interesting thing and it's a different changed uh, way of life. Um, and yeah, so I've been working with them. And if you send any questions to the advert email box, I'll pick them up and get back to you. Brilliant. Thanks, Neil. So next question is um, related to the vision for the future. So related specifically to the applicant. So we're looking, as we said in the in the in the in the, in the voiceover, we're looking for great applicants. We're looking for people who can bring not only their sort of experience from their undergraduate degree or potentially master's degree, but also a, a, a real willingness to learn, an appetite, and a passion for science. Somebody who can really work very well cross functionally. Um, I remember many, many years ago when I was doing my PhD, I won't say how many years, uh, my PhD supervisor told me that it's not really about the science, it's about becoming a rounded individual who understands how to how to do things and how to tackle problems. So we're, we're looking for people who can kind of cope with the uncertainty of a research project. These research projects are specifically targeted at things we don't know where the outcome is going to be. Um, that's the whole point of doing a PhD. So we're looking for people who can cope with that level of uncertainty, can think up, you know, new and interesting ways of investigating scientific questions. Uh, basically, that. Uh, next question is: Do we have any case studies have been through the program? We don't. As I said, the project has only really just uh, started. So we got the original funding for this um, in 
uh, we were awarded the the grant in 2021 um, and since then we've been building the program um, and as as I said earlier the first students have only started a few weeks ago so in due course we will have that but as it as it stands today we don't um, the next question is on CAR T cell therapy. Ah, I think I may have even answered that question by accident. I, uh, next one. So, will cell therapy be able to treat new diseases in the near future? I think I think it it certainly will be able to. Um, so, we've given you an example of a CAR T therapy, which is a, a personalised cell therapy. There are lots of types of cell therapy in development many of which utilize viral vector technology in order to generate the modification that's required. So I'll give a couple of examples. There are some rare inherited um, immunodeficiency diseases where some amazing transformational clinical data has been achieved, where patients may be suffering from um, a, a, a form of immunodeficiency where they have no functional T cells or B cells. Um, in some of the the severe combined immunodeficiency diseases, XSKID or SCID or ADA SCID, for instance, and you can see some of the clinical data that's come out of those trials has been absolutely amazing. So it basically is pretty much curative. Um, there are other therapies coming through as cell therapies, specifically around oncology. There's a lot of activity in the CAR uh, chimeric antigen receptor space that we actively work in in the T cell receptor space. Um, and also a range of other um, applications utilizing um, cells. And I think just for terminology purposes, I'll just briefly mention this. Ultimately, it's all gene therapy. These are things that have had something done to them, either in an ex vivo setting, which is where this cell, this the, the term cell therapy is often often um, sort of coined, or through direct administration. Um, and there, there are approved products on the market, for instance, a product that's um, marketed by um, Novartis, which is to treat SMA, which is a very rare um, type of motor neuron disease. And essentially, these are these are patients who who are you know they're they're diagnosed when they're very very young, um, and it's a revolutionary therapy. This is a gene therapy application where the viral vector is administered to patients when they're in their first years of life. Um, recently, been approved in a number of different territories, both in the US and Europe. So as also, and, th and that is really still a cell therapy because the vector is is modifying the tissue in the in the brain. Uh, right. Next question is, what's the most rewarding thing about your job? Oh gosh, that's a difficult question. <laughs> Lots of things. Um, I think at heart we're all scientists. I used to be a scientist, probably. I'm in senior leadership in a in a biotech company now, so you can probably imagine that we do lots of other non sciencey things now, like um, finance and budgets and, and other things like that. But I guess a lot of my sort of uh, um, pleasures from working with with my colleagues and from working through these kinds of programs, we've got PhD students already. Um, I, I work, for instance, with Kasim on a master's program that he's um, he, he founded uh, at, at UCL. Um, so I think, you know, although maybe not in the bench anymore doing science, um, I've got a, a decent, a fantastic team of colleagues who are very busy and gamefully employed doing really interesting science and I occasionally get asked questions about it. And Kiri, I don't know whether you want to ask her. Talk about it. Um, yeah, learning new things. So uh, uh, pushing back the frontiers of the of our knowledge, in, in, especially in this area. So uh, learning how we can turn some interesting science into, into a practical and, and useful uh, technologies uh, and, and and therapies. That's the bit that I enjoy. Great, thanks. So I'm just looking through the rest of the questions because I'm conscious we've only got a minute left. So is there anything pressing that anyone else has seen that we haven't we haven't talked about no. specifically? Just to say that the deadline is the 9th for application and then we'll be shortlisting through December and interviewing in January, early February, the standard PhD application timetable, I think. Um, and there's loads of information on the website, so you didn't have to catch it all here tonight. Everything we've said will be available somewhere. Neelam will post this and there's stuff on the Oxford Biomedical website and there's stuff on the separate institution website. So you don't have to worry if you didn't catch it today. There's It will all be there somewhere. Yep. And there's a question actually quickly I will try and address, and that is a question about whether somebody who's an international student doing a master's in a in a 
related but not directly related uh, yes you can uh, of course anyone is um eligible to apply um and we are encouraged and actively seeking people from a diverse range of backgrounds both from an academic perspective but also from a personal perspective um james there was a question in there about uh if this is recorded and will be available and if we addressed that earlier yes um i'll take up that one the presentation will be available this is all recorded so it'll be available on our career map career map tv section on our website by the end of the week right great so i think and i hope we've addressed the vast majority of questions i believe i believe so yeah that's all okay, okay. Well, I'd just like to thank everyone for joining today. Um, really appreciate you taking the interest in this in this um, really interesting program. And we look forward to many of you um, applying. It's going to be fun. Yep. Indeed. Yeah. Sounds Thanks, good. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, everyone. Thank, thank you. you very much for coming. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.